It is Ash Wednesday. It is the beginning of the season of Lent, and we welcome you here to worship with us. A couple of quick things about this service. Uh, probably the most important thing for you to know is that there will be a few times throughout the service when you are, are, you are invited to participate in a prayer or a call to worship, uh, different parts of worship. Some of those will be responsive. Some of those will be in unison together. Uh, when those happen, the words will be on the screen. And if they are responsive back and forth, the words that you are invited to share will be in bold. As always, the words to our songs will be on the screen. Uh, today, we are not receiving communion. Um, so, so there's no need, if you're used to worshiping with us on Sundays, uh, there's no need to gather those items. Um, we will light a candle. If you want to gather a candle, you can light that alongside us. Also, I know some of you came out today to the church, or perhaps you're living in other locations and were able to do this in another place and received ashes on your forehead. If you did not get ashes and do not have ashes, that is okay. We will share together uh, just ritual of talking about the meaning and uh, touching our foreheads at that time. But ashes, while a beautiful symbol, are not necessary to participate. So now we do light our candle, a reminder of God's presence with us always. And I invite you to join me in our call to worship. We gather together at the edge of a new season. We stand together on the cusp of something new. Will we wade into self reflection? Will we invite honesty to dance? Will we listen for God's invitation? Will we seek deeper faith? What kind of fast do we choose? What kind of faith will we build? We gather together at the edge of a new season. Listen, God is speaking. Just a few weeks ago in worship, we actually heard the same scripture that we're hearing again today. But as we enter the season of Lent, it seems to be worth hearing again. And as we hear this, there are a few things I would like you to listen for, a few things I want to draw your attention to. First, let's remember that what we read takes place within relationship. The people and God are in 
a relationship. And although they are sometimes misguided, the people have a true desire to follow in God's ways. We do ourselves and the people of Israel a disservice if we don't acknowledge this, if we don't remember that they, like we, were well-intentioned. Second, this conversation begins with a question. Too often, and in so many ways, we have been told that faith is about answers, about certainty. And yet this conversation begins with a question. It's not important just for this particular conversation, but it's something we can learn for our journey of faith. What if we approached our faith as a journey of questions, as a path upon which we are seekers, as a relationship where questions can be as important as answers because they help broaden our understandings and stretch our imaginations. Finally, while rituals and practices can be helpful and can be very important, this passage reminds us that they are not the end goal. Rather, they are tools meant to help shape us to be more completely the people we were created to be. This might be especially important to hear as we enter the season of Lent, a season that's known for practices such as prayer and meditation and fasting, a season in which people often give things up or take on new practices. So we're reminded that none of these is about checking the box of faithful things to do. Rather, all of the practices, all of the worship services, all of the special things that we do in this season and throughout the year are actually about helping to shape and reshape us so that we might live justly, compassionately, and lovingly in relationship with God, with people, and with all creation. So having said all of that, let's hear this passage. This is from Isaiah 58. We're reading fewer verses than we did a few Sundays ago. Today, we're going to hear verses 3 through 7. Let us listen for a word from God. Here's that question it begins with. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. You fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast I choose to a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose? To loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the straps of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin?
Our scripture passage today tells the story of a people who are trying hard to be faithful. They ask God, God, do you notice? Do you see all the good we're doing? Are you proud of us? It sounds a bit like children seeking parental attention. Did we do a good job? In those moments, we always want to hear God say, excellent job, good and faithful servant. But in today's scripture, God says to the people, I want you to seek justice. Friends, faith is a constant dance of us asking God, am I doing it right? And how can I do better? In the prayer of confession, we linger in this tension for a moment. We acknowledge that we are works in progress and we ask for God's help. God may challenge us, but fortunately, God will never abandon us. So let us turn to God in prayer using the words of confession you'll see on your screen. You are invited to pray the parts in bold. Let us pray together. Merciful God, how many times in a day could we choose love? How many times could we choose justice? How many times could we speak kindly to ourselves? How many times could we offer grace? How many times, God, and how often do we miss it? Forgive us for choosing the path you did not travel. Forgive us for hitching our horse to the world's measure of goodness instead of yours. Return our hearts to you and guide us continually, even in the parched places. With gratitude we pray, amen. Family of faith, when a baby is learning to walk, the parents do not criticize the baby for falling. Instead, they celebrate each wobbly step. They applaud every hesitant stand. They whoop and holler and sweep the child up in their arms. Surely the same must be true of God. Although we often lose our way and we often choose the wrong thing, I imagine God whoops and hollers with every step in God's direction. So hear and believe the good news of the gospel. No matter how many times we fall, no matter how many times we choose the wrong path, God is waiting for us at the end with open arms. We are forgiven. We are invited. We belong. Thanks be to God for a love like that. So today is Ash Wednesday. Let's talk about ashes for just a moment. Ashes remind us that we are human, that we are on a journey of becoming more fully who we are created to be, that our journey has a beginning and an end. Ashes also remind us that although we will sin, sin does not have the final word, but the final word is God's forgiveness. God is always waiting for us with open arms. Ashes also remind us that we do not travel this life alone, but rather we are touched by the love of God and the community of humanity. And ashes remind us that we are not responsible for having all the answers, but are invited to a journey of questions and learning and growing, a journey that may meander, but that always has a way back to God. Now, while you and I are not physically in the same space today, 
for me to place ashes on your forehead, still you can experience the same sensation. So I invite you with me now to reach up and to touch your forehead, making, as we would with ashes, the shape of a cross and listening for the voice of God who calls you into this wonderful, mysterious journey of life. Please join me in prayer. God, we want to hear your voice. Shout loudly. Don't hold back. Move in our spirits the way you moved over the waters of creation. We are beginning a new season today, God, and we don't want to begin anything without you. So speak to us today through silence, through scripture, through song. Speak to us as you spoke to the Israelites so many moons ago. Speak to us like a gentle breeze or a loud trumpet. We don't care how, we just long to hear your voice. So don't hold back. We are here. We are listening. Amen. Please join me in the affirmation of faith. The words will be found on your screen. We believe in a God who chooses freedom, who unties every rope and carries our burdens. We believe in a God who ushers in the poor and the hungry, who has saved a seat for all of us. We believe in a God whose love is like the sun, who says, I'm here, I'm here, every time we cry. We believe in a God who walks before us in the parched places, who rescues our bones, who tends to us like a gardener. And because we believe, we strive to choose love. Because we believe, we strive to pursue justice. Because we believe. Amen. Friends, let us go into this season willing to ask the questions that play in our hearts, embracing our call to be people of justice and love, ready to trust in the God who loves us. Amen. <laughs> 